everyone, I'm Erin Fadden, member of the FIRST Tech Challenge Game Design Committee. Now that you've seen the Freight Frenzy presented by Raytheon Technologies Game, let's talk about some of the unique challenges that you'll see in this year's game. First, let's talk about the autonomous task, specifically reading the barcodes. When a team arrives at the field for pre-match setup, there will be a duck located on the middle barcode facing to the right. A team places their robot touching their alliance wall and must preload the preload box. A robot may either be touching the preload box or in full possession of it. Now, a team has the option of introducing their team shipping element onto the field in place of the duck. Once placed, the actual location of the duck or team shipping element will be randomized. This task is really about reading the barcode to determine where the duck or team shipping element is located. The location of either indicates which level of the Alliance shipping hub to score the preload box. Teams receive more points for this task using the team shipping element in place of the duck. Located in the back of the field are the warehouses. Each warehouse holds approximately half of the freight. Freight consists of cargo and three different weighted boxes. The warehouses are alliance neutral, as are the scoring elements. In order for a robot to legally collect and possess freight, they must first start completely out of the warehouse, drive completely in the warehouse, collect one piece of freight, and then drive completely out of the warehouse with the collected freight. To access the warehouse, robots will need to traverse over the barriers. Now, there have been allowances made for robots to avoid driving over the barriers, as there is an approximate 13.75 inch gap. Teams will need to factor this into their robot design strategy. Do you build a robot that will be able to fit through the gap, or would a better strategy be to build a larger robot that can successfully cross the barriers? As mentioned in the game animation, there are three different weighted boxes that make up the freight. Teams can strategize how they program their robot or use sensors to determine the weight of the box as they retrieve them from the warehouse because the weights will make a difference when placed onto the Alliance or shared shipping hubs. All of the shipping hubs have a wobble base. For the Alliance shipping hubs, you want to try and keep those balanced throughout the match, meaning the rim of the shipping hub is not in contact with the floor. The shared shipping hub is split for use of both of the alliances, and the intent is to have the shared shipping hub tipped in favor of your alliance with the rim of the hub touching the floor. In front of the field towards the audience are two carousels, one for the red alliance and one for the blue alliance. Teams will need to be thoughtful when designing a mechanism to interact with the carousel. The robot may only interact with the rim of the carousel to make the platform of the carousel spin. Spinning the carousel and knocking the duck or team shipping element to the floor is the only way to legally deliver the elements to earn points. During the endgame, robots may now cap their Alliance shipping hub. Teams will need to be thoughtful about their team shipping element design strategy as well as how they place the team shipping element onto the hub. The goal is to cap the Alliance shipping hub while still keeping the hub balanced. I hope you enjoyed this overview of Freight Frenzy presented by Raytheon Technologies. Please make sure to read both the Game Manual Part 1 and Game Manual Part 2. There are two versions of each of these manuals on our website for both remote and traditional gameplay. Also, every team is allocated one account to ask questions and receive official answers on the First Tech Challenge forum throughout the season. Thanks for taking a closer look. We're excited to see how you work together and use your robots to build a path forward.